Hello, my name's Ross. I'm the events manager here at Bannockburn House. Bannockburn House is a 17th century manor house that has recently been purchased by the community. It's part of the largest urban community buyout of its kind in the country. Like many folk uh, getting involved here, uh, I never knew nothing about Bannockburn House. It came uh, as a move to Stirling and I was still working in Dunfermline and of course I was driving by the motorway and just in the sort of more wintry months when the foliage has died down, you see this glimpse of uh, an old rustic manor house sort of, as you're driving by. So that evening, that's the life. I was like, oh, I've seen this really cool house uh, on the side of the motorway. And then she tells me, oh, I think a community group spot over. I went on the website and then I noticed that they had weekly, well, back then when it was normal times, weekly Wednesday volunteering days. Showed up to one of them, uh, got involved, just couldn't stay away. For Bannockburn House, as much as we our main goal is the restoration of the grounds in the house and get back into a workable uh, condition that helps serve the community and sort of wipe its own face financially, I think there is a real justification and a real passion within the people involved here to ensure that there's a real sense of community ownership, participation. The arts, creativity and culture is interwoven into that. Uh, normally we have a tour season that runs from April to September where we offer historically themed tours of the house. Our plan was working with Leslie and the various artists at the Gossip Collective was to do a joint event where we'd have various exhibitions in the house uh, running alongside our first open tour uh, days of the season. I'm Leslie McDermott and I am part of Gossip Collective. I'd heard just really word of mouth about the house itself and um, knew that they had occasional open days so contacted Ross Caldwell. He was happy to allow us to come in and visit and talk about possible ideas for art uh, and music potentially at that point for the Easter spring fair um, but for a variety of reasons with Covid that didn't happen. With um, just the artist here, that is really through virtual kind of connections that, that we've done. So instead of the spring open event to the public, it's now obviously been sort of sized down to this group, but we hope still to have something more festival like happening in the spring. Gossip is a group of artists who are local to Stirling area, established a few years ago now. As an artist, I enjoy working with other contemporary artists, so um, it was really important to have creativity in that respect happening or being encouraged and fostered locally. So really looking at, at trying to um, foster opportunities for artists to work together and to support each other. It just evolves and, and we've continued to grow over the years. I work with a range of different media, so this particular installation I've been focusing on printmaking, screen print of fabrics, uh, but I've also incorporated found objects and uh, other sort of more ephemeral materials I often like to use. So here it's soil relating to the plant uh, related imagery. I've been working on two separate spaces for the installations. I've really looked at some archival material in the servants quarters, the um, relationship with people who may well in the past have been servants or maids or wash maids, laundry maids, and the connection with cotton, the sheeting, the clothing and such like that, that would be quite arduous task. It was a big part of life in a, a big house. And thinking, trying to empathise with that sort of fictional person and how they would feel. The motifs themselves are to do with cotton and um, and life cycles, the circular aspect of that, and the wreath shape with birth and death, the central womb. And for the other room, the dressing room, it's looking at another 
a person or a fictional person in the house, the lady of the house. Being a dressing room, that's where she would be aside to meet people within the blue room. The white flower being symbolic of Jacobean, reference to the white rose of Scotland um, as an emblem. The sculptures in that particular piece really relating almost like bodies, physical um, references to, to the men around the central curved piece of the woman with the, the rose, the centre of the rose with it. The idea of taking historical works and reimagining them in a contemporary way and then placing them back into a historical setting is what interested me about this project. Artistic mediums I work with include 3D printing, scanning, installation, digital prints and printmaking. I remix open cultural content focusing on museology and archaeology from an object-based approach. I selected the bust of Monsignor Carlo Antonio da Pozzo, held by National Galleries of Scotland, Edinburgh, as a starting point. A dialogue surrounding the sitter's nephew, Cassiano de Pozzo, who has commissioned Gian Lorenzo Bernini to carve the portrait, is focused upon. His role as collector and patron to the arts is also reflected in my installation of 3D printed works. The materials were sourced from Scan the World and the Metropolitan Museum of Art. The setting of the exhibition meant that new meanings could be formed, and it gave me the opportunity to play about with display differently than before. My works are installed in the Blue Room, and the architectural details and pastel colour contrast well with the delicate figures. The purple and orange piece become a feature as a result. It also allowed me to test out natural lighting on the artworks. The two sculptures and the pedestals have been placed in front of the two windows in the room. This was intentional to focus on their silhouettes as well as shadows. In the past, the works were in a triangle. Now they are running alongside each other as narrative. Yeah, it's lovely having the freedom to work on such a big scale and I knew the house, the room would be big where I'd be exhibiting the piece, so I thought that was a good opportunity to, to do that. <laughs> so my name is Orla Stevens and I'm a landscape painter. It's based in Callender. And I work between traditional landscape painting, so working with acrylic, and I also, I come from a textile screen printing background. So I've been lately trying to incorporate processes of screen printing into fine art context. So I've been painting with textile binders and using, like incorporating screen printing processes into, um, into my landscape painting. The piece I made for a transparency exhibition is, it's a really big piece. It's like this kind of size. And it's, it's just using acrylics on cotton canvas and it depicts a scene of the Duca. Um, when I was researching of what to paint for, for this exhibition. I wanted, to, I wanted it to connect to the grounds of the house. So the piece was made in context of COVID, so I didn't have the opportunity to visit prior to, prior to actually painting the piece. So I had to go off of what imagery and information I could get online. And I came across a wee story on the blog of, of the Duca, and in the background was um, a flooded farmer's field and I love painting water, so that image really spoke to me. There was a bit of humour around it. They named the flooded farmer's field the Duke at Loch, so that's what the piece is called. Um, and so yeah, it just depicts the, the really soft landscape with the, the Duke and the, the loch in the background. When you're walking around the house, you like will have something really big, like mine's big, and then um, there's that beautiful costume piece and that's quite prominent in the room. You see it straight as you walk in, but other ones are really small and you have to, it's almost like a treasure hunt. Like when you're going around the house, you have to go around and try and spot things um, and like really keep your eyes peeled. I'm Frances, Frances Ryan. So I'm trained primarily as a printmaker, um, but I've, I don't get a lot of opportunity to do printmaking. I do a wee bit in the house, but um, I don't get a lot of opportunity for that. So I work mainly in collage at the moment and I thoroughly enjoy that. That's, that's, that's my go-to, definitely. So <laughs> I'm really interested in people and people's stories and things like that. And I kind of um, grasped onto the relationship between uh, Clementine Walkinshaw and Bonnie Prince Charlie. 
and I, I, it was more about the breakup and the reasons that they broke up and more the kind of control that he still had on her life long after they separated and, and so that that's that's really what inspired me. So the first piece is the hole in my sock and it refers really I suppose to the passionate relationship between the two, Ken Clementine and Bonnie and Prince Charlie. But there's also three wee firemen in there and so they're kind of dealing with the remains of the fire, the remains of the passion, eh? So and there's a lot of mark making in that first one as well. So that's kind of about the uh, marks that a relationship would leave on you or the scars that experiences leave on a person. The title itself refers to things that can maybe be uncomfortable. So there's a hole in my sock. So it's something that's quite uncomfortable sometimes, you know, your toes poking through or whatever. <laughs> Um, but you, you may be tolerate it again, or you might even mend it to hide the hole, but there's still some kind of damage evident there. So, um, And the second piece is smaller, so, and I've called that I Can Live With It. It refers to how, you know, controlling behaviours can maybe leave your partner feeling diminished in size and small and insignificant. So it's kind of about how oppression, the effects of oppression kind of has on a person. And in that one, there's kind of... A, a small area in the picture that's kind of bustling with people and then there's the rest of it's taken up with big kind of rocks so it's kind of over the top of them so it's kind of just about the oppression and it's really about the limitations that oppression can have on on people and on the society or, or the person themselves eh? and the third one is called i can't breathe so that's a bigger one again um slightly bigger <laughs> And it's maybe a wee bit more about the realisation um, that the situation you're in is not good. Um, so there's there's images of police parades and that marching on. So it's kind of vintage images, eh? I like the idea of the sitting them on a mantelpiece as well, because it's almost like a, a lot of people nowadays put mirrors above a mantelpiece. It's kind of like, like a reflection um, of the damaged ruins, actually, of whether it's a relationship or certain damages that are in society and things. So. I like that idea. Hi there, my name is Dawn McLaren. I am a sculptural printmaker based in Falkirk. The artistic mediums that I work with is sculptural printmaking, sculpture and mixed media. The piece that is installed in Bannockburn House is based upon the birthing rituals that played feature in the medieval era straight through to Georgian and Victorian times. This is where many midwives who were later on accused of witchcraft would use a wide variety of objects, crystals and herbs to help and aid pregnant women through the delivery of their babies. Being based in the room of Bonnie Prince Charlie um, really added to the installation itself and allowed my piece to speak more vividly and it did create a sense of that you were walking into a room that was prepared for a pregnant woman to actually give birth in. The room is very highly scented with the use of the herbs and spices that play feature in the actual installation. I love so many of the pieces for each of their own reasons. Uh, it was such a joy going around sort of looking at them all. The mice in the kitchen they are so fun and playful uh, and they really feel at home in the kitchen, although the, the kitchen maid probably wouldn't have uh, thought that. You almost meet them as little characters as you go into the kitchen and uh, Chelsea's love of animals, you can you can almost imagine, you know, the, the cook from years before chasing them away. <laughs> yeah. I'm so delighted and grateful to the artist to have worked so hard and so um, personally on how they have adapted and developed their pieces for, for this exhibition. I would say they've all been surprising or moving or, you know, a whole lot of different emotions with each of them. The most moving was the audio piece by 
Carolyn Patterson and I think it sort of so relevant to this time and this house and that it's going to come back into its own over time and as are we and the people <laughs> in the middle of this Covid situation there will be hope for the future. Hope. It can come up from nowhere. White folds in a mass of green leaves sprawling in the direction of the sun. It can come up from nowhere, delicate and unfurling, among dry soil, social distancing and face masks. It can come up from nowhere, even when I thought it was dead and flowerless but watered it regardless, observing brown-green-yellow transitions like warning lights on a car. When I was going nowhere, I turned inward, clearing brittle stems, rotating the pot like a plant. And it came up from nowhere, a white-yellow light in a lockdown tunnel, and the new life it cradled in its spadix, a kaliak promising better times ahead within touching distance.